nice to, you, to see this big audience. Uh, so yeah, I'm gonna cover a topic that, uh, that is quite interesting in the data science field, especially when you start to work in the industry and you understand that actually all these algorithms and all this theory uh, needs to be connected to some kind of business and to bring value. So there's a whole buzz around uh, doing very complex uh, algorithms and to doing things uh, complex and interesting. But the other thing is like, let's bring some business value and let's do this agile and uh, fast. So first of all, yeah, a bit about myself. So uh, I'm coming here from the Tel Aviv office uh, of Booking.com. We opened a new office there uh, back in 2017 and that's when I joined uh, booking.com. Uh, I do uh, lots of stuff with data basically since I was in high school. It wasn't called data science at that uh, point, but I think I developed uh, my career path over the academia, uh, trying to, well, I was trying to do research related to uh, information spread in social networks. And uh, I'm also a fresh dad, so yeah, this, uh, this is kind of complex to travel over here when I leave my uh, four months old uh, daughter back at home, but uh, I'll call her later. And uh, yeah, so let's go to the uh, to bit of about uh, booking.com. So yeah, here this office basically is uh, our main uh, booking go office here in Manchester, but booking.com is a company that established back in 1996. Uh, in Amsterdam, and that's where our, lo where our headquarters are. We have uh, 17 plus thousand employees, and I think the plus is like it could get even like to 18 or uh, 19 at this point. Uh, most of them are around customer service, but we also have very big tech branch, so I think we're around 3,000, 4,000 people who are like focusing on tech. And we, I'm talking about mostly about accommodations from uh, my business point, so we sell more than a billion and a half room nights per day. And as I mentioned before, I'm coming from the machine learning center in Tel Aviv. So our uh, office focusing mainly on solving machine learning problems around the, uh, around the company. So it's also around personalization, uh, voice uh, applications and image applications as well. Cool. So <clears throat> let's start with talking about data science and what do we even think when we talk about data science? So how data science looks like, who are the people who come to data science, and why we even do this? So usually these kind of things come to the mind, okay? Data science is coming with, from people from academia, so it's very research oriented. It's very long-term projects that we're trying to do lots of benchmarking and improve the optimal solution and to get it over and over again to find the best possible thing. And we also have lots of setup time. So just the thing that I met uh, our colleagues today here at uh, Manchester, we were talking a lot about how we get, get the data from one place to another, how we can set up the processes, how we actually can do the things in a very long systematic way. But <clears throat> when we're talking about product development and when specifically we talk about agile, we think about how we can do the things lean and fast and how we can progress uh, better. So, some of the applications that we know usually about Agile is that we need to do things flexibly, that we need to do them fast and simple, that we want to deliver something at every point of the work, so I can't just close myself in a room for a few months, work and expect that I'm gonna deliver something. We do a lot of communication around what we do, so it's not just deliver and forget. And we're also trying to do a lot of reflection and learning on what we did. So maybe what we did is totally useless and we can't do anything with that. So how these two things combine? Because I think that's, I just described two different worlds. Uh, so <clears throat> let me show you how we do this in uh, my team. So usually the teams that we have at booking.com are structured from uh, multi-craft uh, people. We do call it cross-functional teams. So that's a typical team at booking.com, typical product team. We get a business problem and we're trying to solve it all together. And in the team we have UX designers, uh, front-end developers, back-end developers, data scientists, and product owner. Basically, a whole unit that can solve, can get a problem and solve it by itself. We're trying to keep it independently from other teams, trying to get to fast, to move as fast as possible. And you might hear about the same kind of structures, maybe refer to pods or uh, squads, but basically a unit that can work together and not depend too much on other teams. Okay, and then we have the Agile Toolkit. So maybe for, for all of you that didn't understand what Agile is to this point, it's about to, do, to use some kind of uh, uh, tools to 
trying to execute faster and to measure what we do, basically to reflect. So that's what you can see. We plan our work, we execute it, and we reflect on what we do. When we plan our work, what we do is actually trying to do the uh, brainstorming and planning of the task that we have. We do it as all the team. So basically, every part of the team, every data scientist, every developer or designer uh, contribute to the ideas of the product together. And at the same, t so and we set OKRs. OKRs is objective key results. Basically, the goals that the team want to achieve within a quarter, within a year, and trying to get to understand where we want to get. When we're trying to execute our work, we work with lots of stories. So stories is these single points of uh, uh, units of uh, work that need to be done. Usually, we're trying to break it down into things that we can do within two weeks, for example, and how we can get these things accomplished together. We're trying to set it up within these, two, uh, within these phases of uh, sprints. So typical sprint could be two weeks, could be three weeks, depends on, the, uh, depends on the scope of the team. And we think daily with all the functions in the team and maybe with somebody external, so for example, copywriters that work externally from our team, uh, trying to understand where everybody stands and how we can progress together. And the most important part, for, I think, is to do reflection of what we did. So it's both about retrospective, so trying to understand uh, how the work, work uh, how was the collaboration, how was the uh, communication around the work, and where we actually got. And also on the product perspective, was the thing that we tried to do successful, and that's called post mortem. Fine. So when we once we have some basic understanding, uh, let's talk about actual example that we did in my team. So my team was focusing around in uh, destination recommendation. Or traveling in general, uh, what we're trying to do is when the customer comes to our website and already has some booking, we're trying to predict, okay, what we can suggest next to this user and what we can do better. So let's take a look at this trip. I have this trip in uh, mind, so today I'm in Manchester, tomorrow I'll continue to our headquarters in Amsterdam, and I'm open for suggestions where I can go next. Okay, so let's try to solve this problem together. Is it even a machine learning problem? So how would you solve it? Go ahead. Find correlations. Okay. And then what would be the next recommendation? Oslo. Interesting. So yeah, there's lots of approaches to do this, okay? There's no one true answer to that. But what's gonna happen is basically we're gonna have this dilemma, okay? I just mentioned that in my team we have different uh, crafts, so we have the UX, we have the backend, the frontend people, and they have usually quite short tasks, short tasks that we can uh, shorten and put within this sprint scope, okay? So we kind of can advance that. But then as a data scientist, I'm getting this recommendal system problem, trying to find what's the next destination that, I'm, that I want to get, and it could be a really long project. I can use different uh, approaches, I can work on this for a really long time, so if I say that sprint is typically two, three weeks, that could take me even a few months. So I'm quite stuck in this team and I'm not aligned at all with anybody else. So why is that even a problem? Uh, so one problem is uh, something that, uh, that you hear a lot from yourself but also from your management is that you can't actually evaluate what you do. You don't know if you're doing something good, you don't know how you, if you're doing it well, how you're working on this, and basically you just don't have any measurement of what you do. Uh, another thing is that this kind of approach is very challenged by changes. So let's see, say that I want to do this recommender of what's your next destination, but by the time I'll be uh, ready to do this, I have like, some other solution to this problem, or maybe it's just irrelevant at all, and we don't need to solve it at all because I was sending a weekly email trying to suggest your next destination, and we just canceled the emails for some reason. So it's really not flexible. It's also very solo played, so you've seen that I've stuck in my team and I can't really collaborate with anybody else because I have different scope of project. And I get the results only then. So by the time I finish the, pro the project, I don't deliver anything and it's really hard to use anything for that. So let's think about how we can solve it. One typical solution could be trying to parallelize the work that I do. Especially in data science, many of the things are not dependent on me. So for example, we're running a long um, big data query that could take me even a day or two and I have some free time. So maybe I can do pick up some other tasks at the same time and trying to utilize the time that I do and actually deliver with my team and have some results. But this solution is quite obvious and that's not the solution that I want to talk with you. The actual solution that I want to talk with you is trying to divide this big chunk 
And actually not changing it at all, but trying to just break it into these small blocks to have a better visibility and better control of what we do. So how do we do this? When we're looking at the data science uh, project progress, usually what we would expect is to have something like that. Okay, so actually the sigmoid is something that data scientists usually love. Uh, and what we do, yeah, I can mod model anything with these things. Uh, and what we do usually is look at the effort that we invest, okay? So that's all the time and work of the data scientists or the whole team that, uh, that I have, and how much business value I'm gonna return. And usually it can follow this kind of rule. At the beginning, I have lots of time spent in understanding where is the data, what I can do with that, how can I use it together, and I don't have any progress. Then there is some huge breakthrough, and I'm very proud of it. And when I'm very proud of this very huge breakthrough, I want to invest more efforts into this problem, but actually, I have some uh, diminishing returns the more I progress on this problem and the more I invest into this. So this kind of structure could be typical, but what we might have is something like that, okay? We actually don't know how the efforts that we put into this uh, solution are translating. Maybe, and that happens a lot. The first effort gonna ruin everything I do, and uh, I'll understand it, uh, I might understand it quite fast, I might understand it only here. Uh, I might get stuck for a really long time with no real solution and something that's not bringing any value, and it's gonna be very frustrating to me, to my managers, to everybody else. And I might go up and down, right? I can not only go up and improve everything I do, I can also see some kind of decrease of my performance, decrease of the business value, and where I get. So the solution that I'm offering is trying to break it into something like that. And when we're talking about breaking into something like that, it's basically, okay, let's build, let's work with that in phases. Okay, let's do some kind of progress. Let's get a checkpoint. Let's understand if we can improve it and keep working on that. Keep, on, keep uh, trying to investigate it. If there's more effort that can be translated into business value, how long it's gonna take and where am, am I now? At least where am I now compared to what we had before? Cool, so back to our, <coughs> back to our first uh, problem, okay? The first phase, the first cycle that I'll try to do is actually to invest some time into research. Uh, so when we say research, it's usually uh, really hard to say what exactly is a research and how we can even put it into frame of a task for data scientists, how it's gonna bring me business value. But think about it that as a data scientist, anyway, before going to the machine learning solution and before trying to do any magic tricks, I need to get the data. And in order to get the data, I'm gonna put a lot of effort into constructing all the data sources together, into putting it into one table. And once I have that, I can do a lot of analysis for understanding what the data looks like and what I can get, what I can even understand. If, it, even, if this kind of recommendation of my next destination, understanding where I'm going forward, is it even something that's useful for the business? Maybe these recommendations are relevant because people don't book more than one place in the same trip which is not true. We have lots of people who extend their trips. So this kind, of, uh, this kind of research itself, without doing any machine learning, can bring a lot of business value, and that's something that already can be deliverable within the first sprint, and we can use these results, okay? That's not just something that we do in order to progress the next step, that's something that also has some impact by itself. What's gonna be the next step? I have the data set. Okay. We clean it, and then, okay, I want to build some solution. So think about it. My team is still stuck. They progress on building this kind of, uh, uh, this kind of area on the website to recommend the next destination. And they ask me, Dima, you're the data scientist. What's the recommendation we should give? People went to Manchester, then they're in Amsterdam. Where are they going to go next? So I need to give them some kind of solution. And I can't go to complex algorithms, and I can't provide this within the scope of these two weeks. Uh, but I have the data set. So one of the first and simplest solutions that we can do is actually to build some kind of lookup table. So for most of us, it's gonna be, could sound very simple. I just take all the trips from Manchester, I take all the trips from Amsterdam, I do group by, I count, and I understand where people go next. So people go to Manchester, people go to Amsterdam, and then people can continue to London. Let's say London have 500 hits of people who went and extended this trip. The next one is, for example, Rotterdam, and I can just link the next places to go by its counts. Sounds super silly, that's not why, what I was hired for, that's not the data science that we expect to do, but hey, that solves the business problem, and when I deliver that, <coughs> my developers can continue and implement it on the website when I keep working and iterating on this project. 
So once I have one solution and I can understand actually what's the business impact of that, I can go back to this curve. And look, we was looking at three different scenarios of basically where this project can even take us. And now we actually have the power of, of implementing on the, on the website and understanding if we can bring some value with that. So either it's going to follow the green line, follow the uh, blue line, or maybe we can drop everything we have now on the website and ruin all the behavior and uh, not see what we have. So we get into this point. And when we're talking about this all nice curves, we actually don't know what's going to happen in the future. All we can see at this point is what happened in the past. So I don't know. Uh, all I can understand is where I am compared to the past and where I am compared to the baseline that I have. How do I do it? So what we do is basically taking a, a control group and you test it. OK, so we run a lot of experiments at booking.com. Uh, in general, I think that's one of the biggest cultures, uh, data uh, aspects of the data-driven culture we have. We run a lot about thousands of experience at the same experiments at the same time, trying to understand how different features might affect the user. And what we're trying to understand, especially on the scope of machine learning, is how good is the algorithm that I'm trying to implement? Is it even affecting anything? Uh, I'm trying to understand, is my intuition, is trying to recommend the customer the most popular destination to extend their trip? Is it even something that the customer needs? Maybe it's totally not in the right direction. Trying to understand either the direction is going to improve it, or maybe it's just going to drop all the bookings that we have and uh, scare customers away because they see too much personalization and it can get creepy. And eventually, it helps me to understand the causal effects of how the change that I do on the website affects the change that I, uh, affects the impact on the customers. So I have this first checkpoint. And what these checkpoints give me, helps me to understand is, did I do something useful? And if we get this green light, if we understand that actually, yeah, it has some interesting effect, some interesting positive effect on the user, let's continue with our machine learning project. So we were still about to recommend next destination to the customer. OK? And now let's build some model. OK? So we got to the machine learning. And you want to build a, a model for that. I'll pick the most naive one, the naive base. And uh, actually, one of the reasons that we, try and, that we picked this one is because uh, the problem that we're trying to solve is very, very big in terms of cardinality. We're trying to pick uh, one city or maybe four recommended cities out of more than 100,000 cities that we can recommend on our uh, website. We have uh, quite a big supply. And Naive base can uh, deal with it easily. And on the other side, we can take different kinds of features and just engineer them and put them inside this box. So I can understand where this person is coming from. I can understand for how long is it going. Um, is the trip is far away? So did you come to Manchester and Amsterdam from Tel Aviv? Or did you come from Manchester to, uh, to Manchester and Amsterdam from South America? Because if you came from South America, probably these two days that you stay here are not the only two days that you come to, to visit Europe. So these kind of features can be integrated into naive based solution. And we can see how machine learning can actually get a bit more complex uh, solution to that. And we actually have seen some progress. Okay, So this progress shows some positive results. We got um, some translation of our efforts into business value, which means people love this change on the website, loved how it looks like, and got to book more from that. And we tried to implement some more machine learning solutions. So we started with naive base and we said, yeah, that's not a real algorithm. That's just some counts with fancy probabilistic calculation. Let's do complex stuff. Let's do tree-based algorithms. Let's do linear-based algorithms. Let's try to do deep learning. Let's try to do different things. And we actually didn't see much improvement with that and spent a lot of time on that. And I think if we're talking about winter of AI and how things can be stuck, we actually got some uh, got stuck a lot in this project, and we didn't even understand if we should progress. Because remember, I don't know if there's anything better on that. And I think we left it for a while and uh, uh, picked it after. Actually, it was a real winter. So picked it after the winter and trying to find a, another solution to that. Until basically one day, a new data scientist joined our team. And we tried to look on this problem from a different perspective. So. Uh, this data scientist came from our uh, booking machine translation team and basically was working a lot of with NLP data and trying to understand a lot of sequence nature. And he just looked at this problem. You're going to Manchester. You're going to Amsterdam. Will you go next? It behaves very a lot like uh, word sequencing. So let's try to use 
uh, different solutions and algorithms that we do for sequence learning. And RNN, trying to do recurrent neural networks on this uh, solution, could be very suitable. So we just took all the trips that people, uh, that users on our website did and tried to feed it to this network uh, and hopefully understand if uh, entering them as a sequence and trying to learn them as uh, dependent on the time and on the chronological order will improve it. Uh, so we invested a while for this project and what we got is actually a very big leap after long investment of what we did and that's proved that, hey, there's some more uh, progress that we can do if we use more complex tools to this problem. And yet, here at the end, we, at the top, I don't know still if improving this project will bring in more value or not. But at least I know that now I'm way better than what I was at the beginning without this uh, solution at all. So when we're talking about how we can improve this project, it's nice that we're talking about the machine learning solution and about how data scientists can imp impact it. But this only solution won't be very useful without uh, all the things around. So all the things around is around how we communicate it to the user. What is the copywriting that we show them? How you can extend your trip to this place or hey, people like you travel from Manchester to Amsterdam to London. So this kind of solutions is a lot of to do of how people even perceive our recommendation and it's all about user experience as well. Uh, but besides that, putting a deep, uh, deep learning algorithm in production website that's supposed to be loaded within less than half a second has a lot of impact. So we had to invest a lot into infrastructure to support it and to get some results. As long as, hey, we're still data scientists, so we want to retrain our algorithms and we want to get better results that we get offline. So if offline we're trying to uh, evaluate these recommendal systems with uh, MRR metrics or with something that comes from the recommendal system world, we still want to improve it as well. And that's kind of how it looks like now. So when you go to booking uh, search after you have some reservation, you might see this bar and uh, think that's my current trip. So you go, I went to Manchester, went to Amsterdam, and yeah, the next rec two recommendation is Brussels and Paris. That's when I, where they uh, offer me to extend the trip. I think I'll go back home, uh, but yeah, it's still not a bad suggestion. And when we talk about this solution, there's lots of uh, uh, things about how you communicate it. So if we even talk about the trip as a linear thing, as something that uh, relates to the dates, do we suggest different alternatives, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Cool. So that's how basically most of the projects in the booking work, especially if we're talking about machine learning. We're trying to rely on this feedback loop. So first we build some hypothesis that recommending the most popular or the most suitable uh, destination to, the, to extend the trip will actually make people book more on our website. Uh, we're trying to build some solution, we're trying to build some baseline, so trying to compare it even to something, maybe some random recommendation, maybe the lookup table that we try to do. Then we're trying to improve it with the experiment that we're gonna run uh, of comparing the existing model, the existing solution to the new solution, analyze the results, and come up with a new hypothesis. So this kind of loop is basically something that we can drive more and more improvements and can work within the whole integrated team uh, together. Cool. And the most important part when we talked about uh, reflecting on what we did is learning from both successes, but mostly from the failures that we had on the way uh, to get in there. Cool. And the important part of how we can make these things uh, faster and how we can actually work in these sprints and trying to, to get to the scale is lots of support for the data science uh, all around the company. So one of the things is that we have in-house experiment tool that saves us a lot of efforts into setting up these kind of experimentations, comparing between different kind of solutions and dif different algorithms. And we also had a lot of support from the big data infra, trying to actually get in this data together, trying to train these algorithms on really big scales, because we're talking about millions of transactions that need to be aggregated into one model. And it could take a lot of time if I don't have the right infrastructure. Uh, as well as data gathering, so that's actually one of the reasons that I'm, meet, that I'm visiting uh, this office today, is trying to get new data and trying to understand how we can uh, implement more and more features to my models, both offline and online. And eventually, one of the strongest things that we have is models productionization. So the important part of that is that, hey, I finished my model, I have my deep learning model, I have my tree-based model, I have the random forest, it's great, but I did it in Python on a Jupyter notebook, and 
I want to put it live, and remember we were talking about uh, running it on a website within milliseconds. So I can put a lot of effort into trying to put it live myself, and it, obviously it won't work in Python because it's going to be slow. Or I can have the infrastructure of support that already learned from different kinds of models that we have. So tree-based models are supported, linear models are supported, neural networks are supported. And all I need to do is take my parameters, send them to some system, and they're going to be deployed within a few hours. And then I can just use them as a black box on the website and save a lot of time. So that's one of the solutions that uh, empowers the machine learning solution on the website uh, in the fastest way. Cool. And uh, another important part of what we have is actually a huge data science community. So besides being here, uh, coming here from uh, the machine learning office in Tel Aviv and visiting data scientists here at, uh, in Manchester, we have a huge data science community uh, all around the world, especially in Amsterdam. So we have, I think, around 200 data scientists now in the company. And actually, we have internal conferences. So this one is going to be this week, actually. Both me and Nick are going to travel there to, to meet other data scientists in the company and exchange a lot of ideas, trying to collaborate on different, uh, on different solutions. And when I was talking about being the only data scientist in the team or being embedded in a team with people who are not from my craft, working with UX designers that probably can't help me a lot with the modeling, with, uh, the modeling of, uh, of my solution, but can help me more of understanding the customer and the problem. I still have a huge team of data scientists that I can collaborate with, trying to understand what is the best solution for what I'm trying to do. And that's very useful to get more opinions on our, my solutions. Uh, <clears throat> and when we're thinking about, OK, so this thing, this fast pace working, this trying to fit to the business, uh, uh, to the business uh, benefit, could be very challenging. So I see this a lot. Actually, that's something that could be very frustrating when you start uh, to work like that at the beginning. Because basically, what you understand that most of the times, even if you dream about implementing this complex recommended system with RNNs, what you need to do is first to solve the business problems, and you need to start simple. You need to deliver the solution that can be productionized and then can be worked. You need also to be ready to frequent changes. So when I was mentioning that by the time that you develop your, uh, by the time that you develop your algorithm, the block that you want to improve can just disappear from the from the website because somebody decided that it's not the right place to be there. You need to be aware of these changes. You need to understand that the business has its own needs, and you need to keep up with the scale. You can't just take a time and work on a half a year project. Uh, was expected that everything going to stay the same uh, as the time that uh, you began and. You have a lot of stakeholders to work with. So you have a lot of other teams that can work on the same real estate, the, way, the same areas on the website uh, as you are. You need to manage all these all this, uh, connections together. You need to work with people in your team who are not from your craft, so you need to understand how to communicate with them. So it could be quite challenging, but it's also very nice because eventually, as a data scientist, you're quite in the center of the business. First of all, it's very data-driven. You always need to show in the data that you have the right results. And basically, the numbers will decide and not the, uh, you know, the highest paced person in the room. They're going to say, I think that's going to be that needs to be implemented like that. You own the solutions. So you actually come up with the ideas of where you can improve the uh, product. And you're actually the one that's implementing it with the people around you, not with some people that are far away and you really depend on them. And you're very customer focused. So that's something that really help, uh, was very appealing for me, that actually I'm improving something that's going to be relevant for my next trip. I actually working with a product that my mom going to use within a month. So looking, looking at something that, hey, I'm working with, like, with something that's super cool, traveling, and I'm also using that, that's something that puts you in a scope of, like, I'm actually improving something that, uh, that is useful. So if a uh, few lessons that you might uh, want to take away from here is basically, uh, uh, the following. First of all, if you're planning to work with uh, data science solutions on, the, on the products and try to bring business impact, be prepared for change. Because a lot of things are going to change. And if you're not prepared for, it, for that, you're going to be frustrated really fast and uh, couldn't progress uh, more. Uh, the team setup might matter a lot. So I showed you one example of a team that can work and solve uh, a business problem. but Actually, depends on the business problem. You might need different uh, crafts in your team. You might need somebody who understands way better on the business thing that you're trying to solve. So, for example, insurances. You need somebody to understand this kind of uh, world. 
Maybe if you have a product that's heavy on design or heavy on apps, you need somebody who understands how to develop apps. So setting up the right team could be very helpful. Um, when you work in small steps, it helps you to reflect. It helps you to understand what I did so far and did I do anything better than before? And actually understand where should I go next? And uh, try to think about your machine learning solution as something that needs to bring value to the business, not just something that's standalone that needs to improve some benchmark numbers, because otherwise you're going to fail and not be connected to actual need of what you do. And eventually, and that's maybe something that's a very cool tip, but you need to think how you can implement it uh, in your area, it's try to think about platforms that are going to scale. So try to think about not solving only this solution, but about how to set up the right infrastructure and the right environment to solve these problems again. And if you deployed the decision tree once to the production, maybe you need to set some infrastructure to do it again and again to make it quicker and simpler. 